Hey everyone, it's Roland, or as some of you know me, King Shinji. And today we're going to be talking about some record store day uh, records that I picked up. Um, going into this record store day, which uh, happened on June 12th, um, my budget wasn't incredibly big because I'd already spent a lot of money um, actually securing some more uh, vapor vinyl releases that I saw. Um, so my budget wasn't the hugest, I only got a couple. Um, but these were the ones that stood out to me the most and I was able to get at my local record store, Sweet Melissa's in Marietta, Georgia. So today we're going to be taking a look at those and uh, we'll just go over a little bit of you know what each record looks like, how it sounds, uh, and maybe a little bit about the album itself. But uh, let's get started. Alright, so first up we're going to be talking about the Notorious B.I.G.'s duet, the final chapter. This was a 2005 posthumous release for uh, the Notorious B.I.G. Uh, and features basically a lot of, uh, of his own vocals from different songs, also some different B, you know, B-sides and cuts, uh, along with other uh, kind of star-studded cast of uh, uh, musicians uh, paired up with him on all these songs. So we've got a 22-track uh, album here. And you've also got the likes of, uh, of a lot of different people on here. You've got you know, Diddy, Eminem, uh, you've got Snoop Dogg, Tupac, Lil Wayne, T.I., R. Kelly, Bob Marley, and even for whatever reason, Korn. So let's go ahead and get into this. This is the Record Store Day release. It was originally pressed in 2005 when it came out. Um, but this is the repress they did for Record Store Day. And as you can see there, I've got the little sticker, which is kind of cool. So let's go and dig in and take a look and see what it has to offer. So it is a double LP. We're presented with two different ones. And I'll go ahead and pull these out. And they both have the same variant for me, uh, both the discs. But it's this really awesome looking uh, red with kind of a uh, smoky black look to it. So it looks really great. Uh, in terms of sound quality, when I played it, it did it did sound really good. Uh, all the tracks uh, had a lot of clarity and dynamics. So overall, very solid pressing there. Really happy about that. When I picked this up, it did run to me around fifty-ish dollars at my ro local record store, uh, which is a little bit pricey considering it's a double, you know, only a double LP. Um, but I'll, I'll give it a pass because it does come with another cool little thing here. Oh, there's the uh, credit sheet, a little bit of information, so really good stuff there. But you've got this, <laughs> which is a 7 inch, let's see if I can get this out, there we go, uh, a 7 inch, it's got the little uh, punch out hole and everything like that. Unfortunately I have not been able to play this myself because of the fact that I don't have like the uh, I guess adapter piece that you would use with this in order to play it. Uh, so unfortunately I haven't been able to, to really mess with that, uh, but from what I looked up on Discogs, um, the two songs featured on each of these sides is uh, Want That Old Thing Back and Running Your Mouth. So pretty interesting stuff there. Um, but oh yeah, overall it sounds really good. This album has a little bit of controversy considering the different lineups and uh, guest appearances on here. Uh, some prominent uh, figures uh, kind of surrounding the scene, and, you know, kind of disagreed with some of it. Some people call it a cash grab. Um, so there's a little bit of controversy. There are a lot of really good songs in here, though, I think. Um, I personally just enjoy it. You've got It Has Been Said, uh, the single off of it, Nasty Girl, uh, and you've also got um, Hold Your Head uh, featuring Bob Marley. Those are some of my favorites of it for you. Um, there's a lot more that are really good. Um, but overall, if you're collecting uh, Biggie, uh, vinyls, I definitely think this is a great one to have, and this Record Store Day variant one is really clean, so definitely recommend. Next up on the list, we've got Tears for Fears, live at Massey Hall in Toronto, Canada, 1985. This was the record that I was most excited for to pick up uh, for Record Store Day, and it was the one that I was specifically going for. Uh, I'm a huge Tears for Fears fan. Uh, it's one of the first musicians that I kind of really grew up listening to a lot of. Um, so I'm very familiar with their whole discography. I love all their stuff. Um, so this was definitely one I wanted to get, considering a lot of Tears for Fears stuff has not actually been pressed officially on vinyl. So to find this was, you know, pretty exciting for me. 
uh, and it is a live album, of course, and it features uh, a bunch of the their most popular tracks, actually. You've got Mother's Talk, Broken, Head Over Heels, Broken, Pell Shelter, Memories Fade, Start of the Breakdown, The Prisoner, I Believe, The Working Hour, Mad World, Everybody Wants to Rule the World, The Hurting, and Shout. Um, so, was very excited to, to find this uh, being released for Record Store Day. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look inside. Um, nothing too crazy. You have these kind of cool inner sleeves, um, which show the different um, sides and you know, the songs on them. You got a little bit of decorative, you know, uh, stuff going on here. So pretty cool stuff. Um, but one thing I really, really want to talk about when it comes to this record is the sound of it. It is phenomenal. It is definitely one of the best sounding records that I own now. Uh, and for a live album, you know, I was a little bit skeptical on the quality. I figured eh, it might be a little bit compromised, you know, since it's not a studio recording. Boy, I was wrong. It sounds amazing. The sound staging is incredibly dynamic and vibrant, um, and it feels like you're actually there. All the mixing and levels was just on point. Uh, couldn't couldn't be happier with this record, honestly. It is um, just an overall really solid record, and I got to give this vinyl um, really high marks for it. Um, but yeah, not not too much else to talk about. Everything sounds great. The packaging's pretty nice. Um, if I can get these in, <laughs> um, but yeah, only other thing I could think of is maybe if it was a uh, gatefold that would have been kind of cool. Um, but as it is fine with this so pretty awesome to have this super excited but let's go ahead and move on to our last record of the day alrighty and so for the last one we have Prospect Hummer by Animal Collective now this was a really interesting record store day pickup uh, that I wasn't really intending on getting um, but I saw it there and I just had to pick it up um, in fact I didn't even realize when I was reading through the record store day listing that this was even available. Um, I'm a big fan of Animal Collective. Um, I've been listening to them for quite a while now. Um, but I'm going to be honest, I've never heard Prospect Hummer. And I'm kind of glad that I found this because it is very close to another one of their albums that I absolutely adore, being Sung Tongs, which is this very layered, folky, psychedelic uh, album. And as I found out, this record, Prospect Hummer, was released right around the same time as Sung Tongs around 2005-2006. Um, so it, it's very close in sound uh, to it, so it's one of my favorite records of theirs. So very excited to have this, and let's go ahead and take a look here. Um, this one features a very colorful uh, album art and inner sleeve. Um, it looks really cool. Let's look at the back there. Um, this is a... 45 inch uh, EP and it's got four songs on it two on each side. It's you prospect Hummer um, I believe that says Bali sample and then I remembered Learning how to dive um, Hopefully I got all those song titles correct um, But it is a very great sounding album and because it's at 45 rpm you're getting a little bit more uh, clarity when it comes to the sound. Uh, though, to be honest, I actually played it at 33 the first time and honestly didn't really realize that I had. I was just thinking, oh, I guess they're going for a little bit more of a slowed down kind of style. It wasn't until after I finished playing the record that I looked and saw, oh, it's 45 RPM. Let's go and take a look. This is a very, very interesting looking record. Uh, following the theme of the cover art, uh, we have this green and yellow kind of swirl pattern on the on the vinyl there um, but it looks really cool and of course sounds fantastic um, all the record store uh, record store day pressings that I picked up have all been in absolutely uh, astounding quality so I'm super happy that they all turned out great uh, and there's even a little bit of a code in here which you can have if you're watching this video and you want a free mp3 of this I'll slip that back in, and there we go. So yeah, not one I was really expecting to get, but wow, I am glad I got it because I love this record now. Uh, and that's, I think, one of the reasons why I love collecting vinyl. 
Um, I tend to buy a lot of stuff that I've never listened to, and it helps kind of open my eyes to, and, and ears, <laughs> to new records and stuff like that. Um, so really excited to have found that, and overall I'm really happy with my Record Store Day haul. I'm gonna bring the other records in here so we can see. But yeah, really happy with it. Um, there were a few other ones that I wish I could have picked up, uh, including uh, some, one, some 10 Tricks Point Never records. He had a bunch of them, uh, this kind of more uh, earlier works that he put out. I uh, wish I could have grabbed some of those, but I was already a little bit over budget with these three. Uh, but yeah, um, that was Record Store Day, and I will see you guys in the next video where we're going to be talking uh, a little bit more focused on single records. Um, but anyways, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.